Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about the emerging situation as far as uh, Afghanistan is concerned. Of course, Pakistan has remained committed to ensuring that peace re uh, there is a peaceful transition as far as Afghanistan is concerned. And of course, um, as far as uh, the COS is concerned, he was categorical in saying that they, we will not allow the Afghan soil to be used against uh, Pakistan. Um, of course, uh, as far as inclusive government is concerned, we'll be talking about that. What are some of the efforts that are being made at this time to ensure sure that this government is inclusive and also uh, as far as human rights are concerned, as far as the situation on the ground is concerned, what is the situation as far as uh, women and children are concerned, as far as uh, allowing the refugees, uh, the situation of the refugees is concerned, um, allowing them a safe passage is concerned. All of that today, uh, we'll be talking about all of that on perspective. I have with me um, Air Commander Retired uh, Basit Raza Abbasi. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll also uh, be joined by uh, Saeed Muhammad Ali, who's uh, uh, an expert on Afghanistan, and uh, Dr. Jamal Khan, uh, who's an ambassador. Uh, for uh, Thank you for being with us. I want to talk about, uh, there's, there's of course a package that our team has prepared on the exact situation and the way that it's unfolding in Afghanistan. Let's go and see uh, what's happening as far as Afghanistan is concerned. During a wide-ranged speech at the Pakistan Military Academy Kakul after the flag presentation parade, General Kamar Javed Bajwa said that our sincere efforts to support an Afghan-led process to resolve the decades-long conflict in the neighboring country shows that Pakistan wanted peace in the country and the region. He also pointed out that despite paying a huge price for the instability in Afghanistan and its own economic challenges, Pakistan had been hosting over 3 million Afghan refugees for the last four decades. The Chief of Army Staff emphasized that Pakistan expects the Taliban to fulfill promises made with the global community regarding women and human rights and will not allow Afghan land to be used against any other country. On a weekly press briefing, outgoing Foreign Office spokesman Zahid Hafiz Chaudhary said that Pakistan has been taking up the issue of use of Afghan soil by the tehreek -e taliban Pakistan for terrorist activities inside Pakistan with the previous Afghan government and would continue raising the issue with the coming government in Kabul as well to ensure that the tehreek -e taliban Pakistan is not provided any space in Afghanistan to operate against Pakistan. He also urged that Pakistan had always played the role of a facilitator in the Afghan peace process and would continue doing so. We hope that once the new government is formed in Afghanistan, it will take strict measures to ensure that their soil is not used against any other countries. He also said that we see an opportunity in the form of existing international convergence on the need for peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan. Zahid Hafiz said that the international community needed to look into the real reasons for the meltdown of Afghan national defense and security forces and the failure of governance in Afghanistan. Right. Um, the army chief, uh, of course, uh Basit Sahib, I, I hope you uh, heard, he was also, you know, he's been categorical. He's always said that as far as uh, Pakistan is concerned, we'll not allow the Afghan soil to be used against Pakistan. Um, and as far as peace stability is concerned, we've made a lot of efforts in Afghanistan. We've always, Pakistan is always engaged for the sole purpose of ensuring that there is uh, peace uh, in Afghanistan. That's, that's why we have been as active as now. We've been watching the situation unfold. Um, how do you see the situation today? Uh, uh, Army chief has very uh, clearly enunciated hmm. uh, what is Pakistan's stated position. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, that's a very, uh, we have pursued this uh, for a very long time. There was a hmm. time when uh, what we said was hmm. not actually believed by the West. But hmm. ultimately, hmm. everybody came to the conclusion, hmm. uh, what we have been saying all these years, hmm. that there's no military solution to Afghanistan. Hmm. And that's what we have seen. Now that the battles have been won and lost, hmm. uh, we have to see what next. And Abba. from Pakistan's hmm. perspective, hmm. and very clearly stated by hmm. Chief of the Army Staff, yeah. is that we want, above all, that uh, the Afghan soil hmm. 
hmm. should not be used hmm. for any act uh, hmm. um, um, uh, terrorist activities like hmm. we had in the past from hmm. the TTP and other hmm. groups operating hmm. from Afghan soil. Hmm. Uh, Afghan soil should not be used. Hmm. And this is not something which is a new thing from us. Hmm. This is what the uh, Taliban leadership has very clearly uh, stated hmm. that they will not be, let the Afghan soil hmm. be used for uh, um, any activity against any third country. Hmm. So this is what we are sort of asking them specifically from our point of view. Hmm. Because we have a lot of uh, trouble from the hmm. uh, TTP and in the past they have been behind most of the terrorist activities hmm. which took place uh, in Pakistan. Hmm. Of course in cohort with uh, uh, India and uh, um, the hmm. previous Afghan regime. Hmm. So uh, this is what we want. And the next point is the uh, rights of women. Hmm. This is in fact something this is a misperception of the West hmm. which we want to clear hmm. and we want a sort of uh, another clear statement from the Taliban leadership that the women hmm. will be given their rights. Hmm. Uh, here again I would say that uh, uh, Zabiullah Mujahid in his very first press conference hmm. he very clearly stated these points that A. Afghan soil will not be used for uh, hmm. any uh, 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 adverse activity hmm. against any uh, hmm. third government hmm. or country. Hmm. Second, women will be given their right place, mm. of course, under the Islamic laws and Sharia. Right, let's go. Let's let's talk about more about that. First, let's hear what uh, uh, the army chief said. Uh, let's and uh, let's hear uh, what he had to say about Afghanistan and Pakistan's role. Our sincere efforts to promote and support a process in Afghanistan have been a strong manifestation of our vision for a peaceful, economically integrated, and prosperous region. No country can understand it better than us as Pakistan paid a huge price for instability in Afghanistan. Despite our fragile economic condition, we have displayed unprecedented magnanimity toward our Afghan brethren by hosting over 3 million refugees for more than four decades. Let me, however, say that we will continue to play a mature and responsible role for peace and stability in Afghanistan. Right. Uh, Basab, as far as, uh, you know, let's talk more about uh, as Pakistan's role, that traditional role that we've had in Afghanistan. As, in terms of now, uh, of course, we want there to be a peaceful transition. We want this, uh, you know, uh, the refugee issue, of course, it's a huge issue for the world at this time also, uh, to be dealt with as humanly, uh, you know, as possible. Uh, what are efforts there? What, what do you, how do you see things unfolding at this time in Afghanistan? Uh, Pakistan, as Army Chief has just stated, mm. we are already hosting uh, more than 3 million refugees mm. since last 40 years. Mm. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a fragile economy, we have mm. limited resources, right. but we have still extended, as you have heard in the news, mm. there are some camps being set up mm. to uh, receive the uh, refugees who ultimately pour in. Mm. Having said that, Pakistan has been trying that there should not be a refugee problem. Mm. And in fact, if mm. you see whatever has ha happened in Afghanistan in the last uh, 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 one month or so, there has been a lot of uh, overtures for peace from mm. Taliban, mm. right from their onslaught mm. to the uh, provincial capitals. Mm. Uh, uh, there was a very peaceful mm. transfer from mm. city to city, from mm. province to province, from mm. capital to capital, mm. and ultimately uh, culminating into uh, mm. uh, fall of Kabul. Mm. And here again you see the restraint that uh, Taliban uh, played, mm. that they did not want to enter Kabul. They mm. had virtually uh, siege, besieged it, mm. but they still did, didn't want to enter it. Mm. And they entered only because the security of Taliban was jeopardized because the uh, Ashraf Ghani had fled and the, mm. uh, the Afghan government and security situation, security system had mm. crumbled. Right, let so, me come back to you. I'm going to go to uh, Saeed Muhammad Ali. Ji, uh, how do you see the situation? We've been talking about Pakistan's role, traditional role, of course, in Afghanistan, but now that the situation is in flux and things seem to be changing as we speak, uh, as far as Afghanistan is concerned, of course, there's there, the concerns, initial concerns uh, with the Taliban, uh, you know, have are, st are still persisting in some quarters. How do you see things as far as uh, those concerns are concerned in particular? I think um, there is room for uh, much more um, caution 
uh, and uh, care uh, then one one sees being uh, you know expressed uh, by uh, by uh, much of the intelligentsia which is uh, you know is quite optimistic and there's a lot of sort of uh, uh, enthusiasm about uh, you know about this boggling speed with which the Taliban have uh, you know have come to power. Um, I do think that there is uh, you know um, if um, history is uh, you know yes there's a, there's a neo Taliban uh, you know it's not um, the old Taliban. I mean they now have relationships with even with Iran uh, um, right. I mean countries that they were uh, at odds with. And uh, you know, and China and Russia are also in the equation, mm -hmm. and there was an intelligence failure on, on the part of the Americans. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is still, I mean, there's, there, I mean, we are used to political rhetoric, right? And and mm -hmm. as an academic, one is used to looking not at policy statements but trying to read between the lines. And if one reads between the lines, I, there is room for much more cynicism, um, uh, if not better, pes uh, pessimism, okay. certainly for caution. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, you know Pakistan needs to uh, needs to have um, even in, in its policy statements needs to have a much more cautious approach, because if things start to unravel, you know, if we start seeing. Um, uh, course violations, uh, mm. you know, a crackdown on dissent, uh, a reneging on sort of, you know, um, on on uh, human rights. I mean, we ourselves struggle with uh, with women's rights, human rights. It's it's not to say that um, you know the, the West when it took on, you know, the, I mean, it was also <laughs> taking on this idea of trying to save Afghan women from the brutality of the of the Taliban. I mean, that's not what uh, the invasion of Afghanistan was about. But if we want to jump the gun and suggest that now the Taliban are going to within the parameters of, of theology and our religion, I mean, which is a spectrum of views, right? Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not um, the Taliban are not known for their enlightened moderation, nor have they proven it. And I think that if we jump the gun and begin endorsing uh, their, uh, you know, their um, their aspirations uh, uh, before they occur. I mean, we are setting ourselves, uh, you know, up for uh, embarrassment later. Come back to you. I'm going to go to Dr. Jamal Khan. G. Uh, Jamal, sir, do you agree uh, with what uh, Saeed Muhammad Ali is saying? He's saying that we need to be skeptical at best about uh, the way things are as far as Afghanistan is concerned, uh, considering the treatment of women, um, as far as Taliban is concerned, how they and in what direction uh, they will take uh, the country in. Do you agree with him? Well, people like myself and, of course, the other guests, I guess, are quite cautiously optimistic about uh, the developing situation if we compare it what it was uh, during the last regime of afghanistan and afghan taliban so from that uh, standpoint yes um, we are cautious and we are optimistic also um, but the fact of the matter is that this time what is the new thing in Af uh, afghan taliban uh, what is the new approach by afghan taliban uh, if we follow or if we pursue the Doha Agreement and the way Doha Agreement was uh, signed, uh, starting the efforts were made starting from 2011 once the Doha um, uh, office was established. Um, in, uh, and uh, the outcome was really such a pleasant outcome. If we read the Doha Agreement, we'll find that Taliban, whatever they agreed, first of all, it was very well negotiated agreement. Secondly, this agreement has been ratified by the Security Council. Thirdly, this agreement has, under the United Nations Charter, been registered with the United Nations. So it becomes the legal instrument of the international law. Mm. Taliban negotiated it quite well. At about 26 different places in this uh, agreement, they had it included Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. So they are not doing anything new, number one. Number two, they committed that they would not let their soil uh, to be used for any other country, what CUS today has also mentioned. And thirdly, 
they had agreed to give the human uh, women rights not only that some of the negotiation some of the, um, the negotiations with Taliban made in Doha there were women uh, in those uh, delegations so from that angle they have started showing they have started resonating their mind changed mind I would say and then connected quickly with the uh, Security Council last meeting, which happened about five days ago, and what was the outcome of it. And then try and compare it with Doha Agreement, and plus try and compare it with Zabiullah um, uh, first press conference in Afghanistan. You'll find so much of similarity. There's so much of similar points. And therefore, I would say, and the world is also cautiously optimistic and hoping that Taliban, whatever promises they are making, Suez in his speech has all very clearly said that we would like the uh, Taliban to uh, to fulfill their promise. These are the words of the Suez, and those promises are the same what we are discussing: women right, this file should not be used, and then in addition, chief of the army staff, while addressing to the cadets, has also mentioned something about hybrid war and hybrid war is the main problem for us. Now, the fact of the matter is that once U.S. has withdrawn and once India has really had an embarrassment in Afghanistan, so all these um, uh, miscalculations by particularly towards the last, last segment of the withdrawal of U.S., and that directly impacted India also. So this has caused embarrassment to India, embarrassment to U.S., and if you see their media houses, all are filled with the criticism. And uh, even Putin yesterday in his speech, let, in the farewell let me, speech. Let me come of, back to you. Uh, Jamal Sab, I'll come back to you. We're also, uh, you know, the information minister also uh, spoke in some detail about the situation in Afghanistan. Let's hear what he had to say. Pakistan ki jo embassy ka kirdar hai is wakar Kabul mein usko puri dunia zarar hai, international media zarar hai. हम तकरीबन 4000 वीजे अब तक जो है वो इशू कर चुके हैं 2000 वीजा जो लोग हैं जिनको वीजा इशू किए वो ट्रैवल भी कर गए हैं उनको इवैक्यूएट भी कर लिया गया है पीआईए ने ही अकेला तकरीबन 1400 के करीब लोग जो हैं उनको ये सहूलत दी है कि वो काबुल से पाकिस्तान आ सके इनमें ज्यादातर सहाफी शामिल हैं इंटरनेशनल मीडिया से जिनका ताल्लुक है उसके साथ-साथ इसमें आईएमएफ वर्ल्ड बैंक के लोग शामिल हैं is में مختلف nationalities के लोग शामिल हैं जो embassies साफ था जो वहाँ पे फंस गया था और फिर काबुल में जो events हुए उसकी वजह से उनका निकलना मुश्किल हो रहा था तो हमने इन तमाम लोगों को एक बहुत बड़ी ये सहूलत दी है evacuation की उनको हम काबुल से जो है वो निकाल रहे हैं उसके साथ साथ जो अफगानिस्तान में अमन और इस्तेमाल के लिए जो हमारा किरदार है अब वो जाहिर है कि वो सबसे अहम है और उसके लिए हम इस वक्त तमाम जो रीजनल ताकतें हैं लाकाई ताकतें हैं उनके साथ भी हम एक क्लोज एसोसिएशन में काम कर रहे हैं उनके साथ हम मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं आलमी ताकतों के साथ भी हमारा इस जमन में करीबी رابطہ है और अफगानिस्तान में हुकूमत साजी जो है वो जाहिर है अफगानिस्तान के लोगों ने करनी है और उसमें उन्होंने ही लीड देनी है लेकिन जो इस वक्त हमारी जो कोशिशें हैं वो एक पुरमन और मुस्तहकम अफगानिस्तान के लिए हो जाए Right. Um, gee, uh, Basit Sab, you heard what uh, the information minister is also saying. Of course, primarily we want there to be peaceful uh, peace in the region. And Afghanistan is, of course, you know, that uh, key to ensuring that somehow that kind of peace can uh, persist. Of course, we also know, uh, you know, there has been talk about what's happened as far as India is concerned and the activities there. Do you, how do you see the role um, as far as their role is, as, as you know, of course, they've been uh, participating in all sorts of activities. What kind of situation do you think we need to be prepared for there? From the Indian side? Yes. India has a very uh, negative role to play. Mm -hmm. It has always tried to step Pakistan from its back. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the uh, previous Afghan government mm -hmm. colluded with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why they succeeded in carrying out a uh, lot of uh, mm. subversive and um, uh, terrorist activities inside mm. Pakistan. Mm. Now they have lost that game. They have, the India has lost that leverage now. Mm. And that is what is perturbing them the most. Mm. Uh, and here is Pakistan's role. We have went all the way, we have uh, went out of way hmm. to support them and help them and sort of uh, hmm. uh, their voice be taken uh, on the international media. Hmm. Hmm. We were the ones who took them to the negotiation hmm. table. 
and this is what our uh, mm. relationship with them is. Mm. It's a very sobering mm. uh, and sultry relationship. Mm. Now is the time that we sit down with Taliban mm. and discuss our own problem with them mm. as equals. Mm. And our most significant problem is this TTP right. and this uh, Indian influence over there. Mm. We don't want this to be repeated. And we are hopeful. That it won't uh, be. Yes. Saying. And I would like to say mm. that we should not think uh, from our phobias. Mm. We should not create our own uh, Im through our imagination. Mm. We should see the ground realities. Mm. We, we should see what has been happening in mm. Taliban in the last uh, four weeks. Let's, and let me then, come back to and uh, I, will, I want to take uh, this uh, same thing to uh, Saeed Muhammad Ali. Right. Uh, do you agree? You think that we are looking at it from uh, uh, from a perspective of the old Taliban? Um, are we not seeing things the way they actually are? According to uh, Basit Saab, you know, he's saying that we have to look at what's happened in the last four weeks uh, to assess the situation of how the Taliban are acting at this time and what direction they want to take the country in. And the fact, of course, that whole argument, whether it's the same Taliban, the different Taliban, um, in, in terms of their principles, in terms of the way that they're treating uh, women, children, all of that? Well, I tend to see things uh, in gray rather than in black and white. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I, one um, concedes that, uh, you know, I mean, the, the speed with which the Taliban have come to power shows that there has been on the sidelines there's been negotiation, there was demoralization and the dismal failure of, uh, you know, propping up the Afghan National Army uh, as weaknesses which explain uh, the Taliban uh, sweeping into power and their side deals with various sort of warlords, etc. And then, uh, you know, uh, power brokers seeing where the tide of history was going and capitulating without, you know, resistance. But at the same time, uh, you know, I mean, there is disgruntlement in the Panjshir uh, uh, Valley. Um, you know, we do see the frustration of, uh, you know, of Akhwans the, the, over the past 20 years, you know, their desperation to flee and the Taliban uh, cracking down on dissent, you know, people trying to take out the new Akhwan flag and, and the Taliban showing early indications of their intolerance. Right. And they but at the same time, they are trying to be politically savvy. Right. I mean, there are new communication tools. This is a new Afghanistan with a lot of mobile phones. I mean, they know the power of the media and they like everyone else. Uh, right. Like, I mean, um, yeah, like uh, President Bush went in to, you know, um, uh, save Afghan women besides, you know, get revenge for 9-11. Right. So there, there are these rhetorical aspirations. So similarly, they have you know, um, the I, I just believe that there, you know, we shouldn't blindly be accepting their rhetoric. And there are some troubling signs, right? Like the Haqqani network, for instance, taking over security of Kabul is um, ringing alarm bells in the international community. And, the, you know, which is why Pakistan, I mean, it, it's not to say that, um, you know, I mean, when it comes to the acrimony between India and Pakistan, Pakistan had, um, you know, uh, had sort of uh, had uh, you know and 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 paid a heavy price for it, uh, but you know it had uh, kept uh, pressing the U.S. to negotiate with the Taliban. I mean. One hopes that, uh, you know, one wishes that this had happened 20 years ago during the bond process and Pakistan had been able to convince the international community to let the Taliban in, uh, you know, into government formation where we might have really seen, uh, uh, you know, a more moderated uh, sort of um, power sharing formula come into being. But, you know, it was that black and white, right, like fight the Taliban and get them out, which proved to be an impossibility. But now, you know, if we entirely place hedge our bets, I mean, already we see the international community tightening the purse strings. So yes, they've got a lot of armament with the Humvees and the uh, and the helicopters and and the latest assault weapons. So no longer is it AK-47s. But you know, if uh, if the international community, you know, uh, decides to uh, you know keep uh, freezing uh, funding from Afghanistan 
then the that is going to lead to more desperation. Yes, there's there's China and Russia, and they they are going to pursue their own interests. But I mean, what is that going to mean for you know the Taliban negotiating? I mean, they wanted Ashraf Ghani out, and Pakistan had no love lost for Ashraf Ghani either. But uh, you know, but what is going to be the new power sharing formula? I mean, Afghanistan is a multi-ethnic country, what and it what, faces. How do you, how do you th see things? What What do you think will be the new power sharing formula, in your opinion, at this time, the way things look? Well, I mean, right now it seems like the Haqqani network is get getting, um, a, a, you know, a lot uh, of influence. Um, the 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 Taliban leadership is. Predominant, I don't see them making the sort of, um, you know, if they've met Abdullah Abdullah, it would be useful if they, you know, minus uh, Ashraf Ghani, if they can sort of reach out, right, and, and not only reach out to those uh, currently in political power. I mean, there was a multi ethnic government, it just wasn't representative and it was propped up, and the entire system, the Weberian system of governance, was foreign dependent. Right and independent on these international consultants, it wasn't quite an organic model of government. Government, but I mean, if it's going to be, you know, a, a ideologically driven shura, which depends on the Taliban's interpretation of religion, right? I mean, then we could go down the theocracy route, right? I mean, they've already expressed that. I mean, they don't have an interest in democracy. I mean, it's not to say that we have a perfect democracy even in the US and in, in many other countries. But I mean, if there isn't a spirit of accommodation and the Taliban have so far shown this, right? I mean, they have used uh, uh, force or the threat of force, right? And uh, behind good, the curtain deals. Spirit of to, accommodation, to when you part. talk about that, and, let me let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Dr. Jamil. Gee, Jamil Sab, do you think that they have, I mean, there is this debate, right? Do you think at this time that they have that spirit of accommodation, these Taliban? Well, they have demonstrated it. In fact, starting from that very instrument, which I just referred in the last segment, uh, the Doha Agreement, and uh, they have demonstrated whatever they have said. And in the Doha Agreement, they were very clear, they were very candid that they would have Islamic Emirates. And in the Doha Agreement, they have also mentioned about Sharia law. <clears throat> so there shouldn't be any surprise. What they are saying now is in line with the Security Council aspirations and the and the outcome of the Security Council, what they said, and our own Pakistan's uh, National Security Committee. And in fact, there is so much of uh, common points what is happening around Mr. the Mr. Taliban Mr. Let me going by that. Let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Dr. Irfan Mahsood, who is an um, Afghan affairs expert. He's also with us now. G Dr. Irfan, how do you see the situation? We seem to be having this um, debate about whether the Taliban have shown a spirit of accommodation with what has transpired till now. Um, and whether, of course, by that same argument, they are a different Taliban and therefore a peaceful transition will continue uh, from what's happened. Uh, how do you see things? Uh, I think that uh, it is clear from their attitude and the uh, Taliban of 1996 are different uh, from 2021 and uh, they are, uh, I think they are accommodating uh, uh, new ideas, uh, new perspectives, uh, integrating themselves with the international community. Uh, they are more uh, uh, outward looking now. Uh, they, are, uh, they, they are trying to accommodate women as well, but with their own standards. And I think the liberals uh, who are pro proclaiming themselves to be liberals, uh, including the West, they should know that there are other standards as well. Uh, they should not just see with one prison uh, the entire, uh, you know, frame. So you're saying that it, it, it depends on how you look at it, but at this time, according to you, they have demonstrated that there are different Taliban, and they have, according to you, you're saying their own standards uh, that may not actually correspond with the West's standards, but nevertheless, uh, you know, they're not necessarily wrong and this is a new Taliban. That's what you're saying. Yes, exactly. 
Right. Okay. Let me let me please stay with us. I'll just come back to you. G. Uh, Basit Sab, do you agree? You think that it is it is a different standard. We've been talking about this. It's it may not be what the the West wants, but nevertheless, it is uh, you know. And of course, we've also had this discussion on how you know the West itself. You know, if you talk about America, it's not the perfect democracy. Sure. So it's in in terms of a new evolving system. There has been some discussion that maybe this is a new evolving system in Afghanistan at this time, which uh, will maybe be a different, uh, you know, slightly from what the West wants it to be. But it, it, it doesn't mean that there are going to be gross violations. It doesn't mean that it's going to be the same kind of Taliban that there was before. Manuk, I just want to say hmm. that let's stop looking at the world from the Western prism, hmm. what they have provided us. Hmm. Hmm. For the last 20 years, right. We never heard Taliban. We never heard them speaking for themselves. Mm. It was the Americans. It was the Western media who was mm. give, portraying an image which was a bloody image for the Taliban. They are not like that. Now we are seeing that the real Taliban. This is the first time that they have come out and they have spoken. But are they not? I mean, of course, there's been that, that whole TTP and TTA and, and, you know, whether there is there are links there. There is all that debate also at Look, this time. whenever I say Taliban, hmm. I exclude TTP hmm. because TTP is a group which has uh, sort of is a splinter group. Hmm. Okay. They actually uh, swear, uh, held their loyalty to the uh, Amir of uh, this Mullah Umar. Hmm. Uh, but later on, they hmm. took a different path and they actually started towing the, uh, they were financed and funded by the, uh, the raw and Indians okay. and they were different. So hmm. let me complete my sentence okay. that for 20 years hmm. our minds have been set in a certain direction hmm. and unfortunately we have started seeing that well. Okay. Now that Taliban leadership hmm. that you see sitting there, hmm. they are prisoners of Guantanamo Bay, Bay in them. Hmm. Hmm. They are people who there's uh, had money uh, for them hmm. in millions of dollars. Hmm. And if we still keep seeing them as with that image, we'll ever, ever always think them as terrorists. Hmm. But I want to focus on their actions, okay. what they are talking, hmm. and I want to believe that they are right. I don't want to see them from the perspective on the images provided by another country, another mm. press, another media. Mm. I want to use my own mind. Mm. And my mind and my conviction tells me that these people are sincere. There, and uh, as Dr. Jamil has very uh, clearly mm. pointed out, mm. my lasting images of mm. the Doha agreement that mm. Mullah Ghani brother signed, mm. that was a, a sort of classic example, mm. the document is a sort of will be studied for long by the students of political science mm. and uh, foreign policy. It is a beautifully uh, crafted document. Mm. Its heading is, it's between uh, Islamic Emirates of Pakistan and United States. Mm. There's a suffix added that United States doesn't recognize it as that, they call it Taliban. But as far as the Afghan side is concerned, they always signed this as a hmm. document between okay. Islamic Emirates. Hmm. So now if that you have signed that agreement, hmm. now let them create hmm. a government in the ambit of their aspirations. Okay. And I can tell you, there is no democracy in many countries, hmm. uh, this conventional democracy, Western hmm. democracy. It's hmm. not in China, it's no, not in Russia. It's I not don't think it's about democracy any. It's, it's just about whether there can be uh, some sort of, uh, you know, a peaceful Afghanistan where, you know, there are uh, rights are upheld. It's not in, there's no extremism. Exactly. We saw what happened earlier on, of course. And you're hmm. saying that this is a different... This is what exactly my point is. Hmm. that. We see a distinct possibility of, that of a being peaceful there. Afghanistan. Okay, right, right. Uh, I'm going to go to Said Muhammad Ali. G, uh, how you you think that that possibility again? Uh, what uh, Basit Saab is saying, what Dr. Jamil is saying, even what Dr. Irfan, you know, there seems to be agreement that there is uh, across the board as far as uh, the intentions of these Taliban are concerned. In the fact that they want there to be peace, they want, and the fact that they be judged by what they have done so far. In terms of what they've done so far, uh, just looking at that, do you think there's a chance that there can be, um, you know, that kind of, I'm not saying, you know, again, it doesn't matter what form it takes. What matters is what kind of rights are there, what kind of a peace, whether we can see a peaceful Afghanistan. Well, frankly, it's too early to tell. I mean, we don't even have a government 
right? I mean, they, there's mm. now they're mulling over uh, because I think <laughs> their mm. takeover of Kabul even had surprised mm. them. So I don't think that they had a game plan and that's still being figured out. But I think the first indicator would be the extent to which, uh, you know, they are able to form a multi-ethnic, um, you know, government structure. I mean, be it mm. under the uh, under the rubric of an Islamic Emirate or mm. uh, another form of government. Um, so one would be the spirit of accommodation. B would be their ability to tolerate dissent. It's it's not you know just trying to use um, media as a form of propaganda, right? But I mean you know there is going to be a lot of cynicism in in the West, and uh, you know of course one takes <laughs> that cynicism also with a pinch of salt. And there is, you know, the geostrategic um, uh, so dynamics in the region have also changed, right? I mean, here we have the irony of now Russia trying to yes. come back as a legitimate uh, peacemaker in the region, mm -hmm. right? Like China has its own interests, which do align with Pakistan, and Pakistan has been uh, sort of, you know, has been uh, mediating Chinese uh, interests as well. And there is, to a certain degree, everyone even India, I think for that matter, everyone wants a peaceful Afghanistan and Afghanistan from where, uh, you know, the destabilization across the borders does not occur. But I think all neighboring countries and, you know, the West and other power brokers like China and Russia have their own versions of what now. that peace needs to look like. Right. From what's happened till now, do you think that there there is that capacity for dissent as far as it, to use your words, uh, these Taliban are concerned, the inclusive government that is being talked about. Do you think that there is a chance that there can be that kind of inclusive government or, uh, you know, as far as tolerance from them is concerned? Do you think that that's a possibility? It's um, uh, it's too premature to say that, right, because they don't have a government yet. I mean, what do we base it on? Four days, five days? So, you know, uh, but the indications and I think that the emphasis on issues, I think, rather than just us uh, blanket giving signing over a blank check of endorsement. I mean, there are very important issues that, uh, you know, that merit consideration. I mean, consider, for instance, that on the Kabul River, right, uh, given climate change and this, that, the other, there's no water sharing agreement between Pakistan and Afghanistan. You know, the West is withdrawing aid. I mean, you know, Pakistan at this moment has, you know, it, it has the ability and it's still position that, you know, it can play an important role in creating a government which is palatable to different sides, right? And in that process, it can also put in place mechanisms for, uh, you know, for the economic sustainability of Afghanistan. Because right now, um, you know, the, the entire sort of humanitarian sector in Afghanistan is entirely aid dependent. I mean, its economy is in shambles. Uh, you know, at present. And, uh, you know, Pakistan can even talk to the U.S. I mean, you know, since the past 15 years or so, we've been hearing about the Reconstruction Opportunity Zone, which straddles Fatah and, uh, you know, in Afghanistan and gets preferential access to American markets. Right. So and of course, that will all happen, you know, if there's a government that is palatable enough. Now, I can't, you know, just based on statements made by the Taliban, uh, you know, I, I cannot, uh, you know, I, I don't have that conviction in, uh, you, you know, in, in the Taliban. Right. We don't know yet. Don't. Gee, uh, Dr. Jamil, uh, would you agree? Well, there are speculations, you know, of course, I will agree to a greater extent. But, you know, let me support my uh, this agreement or my, my point with certain right. ground realities. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we draw any conclusion at this stage? Of course, there are speculations. Of course, there is skepticism. That's what the entire world is saying. But now, since we are the neighbors and we are looking at it from a very close perspective and from a very close distance. Now, here are a few points. How do we base our our hope? Now the hope is that this time their engagement, both behind the curtain and uh, through the open negotiation, uh, they have been engaging with all the neighboring countries, including Iran. And see the demonstration of it during the Ashura period. They have given protection to the northern provinces where the Shia majority was there, and they protected those processions. Could you could we think of it? 
last time and could you could you ever we could ever imagine that there is a taliban flag and in the um, and and, and uh, parallelly are just uh, close to taliban flag there is a flag labbaik ya husain you know in those provinces so that's the level of tolerance i wanted to you see with such a with such a huge i would say uh, change over in afghanistan and after such a prolonged period of uh, struggle and uh, disturbance in afghanistan and meddling as president putin has said yesterday so afghanistan the entire west has been meddling with it and this what uh, president putin had said yesterday that they should stop meddling now and they should not apply the template of democracy on afghanistan you were talking last segment which i could not complete because of the other guest was to be taken that all inclusive government would they be able to fulfill their promise uh, would uh, they be able to have their uh, democratic way of doing it well they are trying what they are uh, promising and what they are stating in front of the entire world and of course they need the world support this time and that has been already been discussed their course, budget their finances their other things so so, so no but then just let me let me finally let me finally just three points hmm. uh, uh, three certain seconds each but taliban this time have parallelly taken three modalities three hmm. mechanism one was the geopolitical second was hmm. the diplomatic uh, strategy hmm. third was the military strategy and all three of them they are worth studying in the universities this time and i uh, am of my considered opinion that mm. their advisors this time and their mm. modified approach would not mm. take them to that ditch again where they were last time and this time okay. uh, hopefully they but then there are spoilers which prime uh, which the chief chief of the army staff he may mentioned yesterday that mm. there is a hybrid war and we would not like that to happen in our region and you think that america wanted to give it in the play to china or to other countries of course the america or the india or other people those who want to contain china they there would be some a uh, hybrid right. uh, or proxy right. war and all that and because right. of which i, will, I have Taliban to i have to cut i have to go to dr irfan masood with this ji dr irfan you agree of course that you know the way uh, the, the hybrid war that uh, the chief of army staff talked about of course these are some uh you know flags for concern at this time as far as afghanistan is concerned and we need to ensure you know as far as pakistan is concerned of course our primary primary goal is that there should be peace in the region so with respect to that that's why we had engagement there that's why we continue to have engagement there uh that's our primary concern as far as afghanistan is concerned Uh, yes uh, i totally agree and uh, actually it is important for the taliban in afghanistan that they uh, should uh, you know practically uh, show to pakistan and the world that they have cut ties with ttp you know uh, because uh, i have uh, heard uh, a couple of times uh, uh, some militants Uh, in this month and a uh, couple of days ago uh, they have attacked in south uzbekistan and in north uzbekistan as well mm. so uh, this border crossing mm. um, it, it will not help so i think uh, the taliban in afghanistan they should clearly state uh, you know like that they have cut all ties with the, those who are using their land it's very important mm. first of all mm. uh, this, uh, am i audible DG you are Yes yes the the second thing is uh, about uh, the uh, the extremism uh, you, you see the uh, rise of Taliban in Afghanistan and many of the youngsters um, here including the religious political parties and uh, other people related to relig- religious elite they have mm-hmm. applauded that and i think uh, we should be really careful because mm-hmm. it can trigger a new wave of extremism uh, inside pakistan you know mm-hmm. there are elements so we should be really careful about it and we should uh, mm-hmm. learn from the history in this regard okay. right fair enough um uh vastav unfortunately i'm out of time but i'll you know let you make some final comments before we close i only want to say that there's a process known as extrapolation mm-hmm. you see the uh, preceding steps mm-hmm. and you project in future mm-hmm. if you see at the moment 
Mm -hmm. are, it's a wrong concept that Taliban are only Pashtun. They are mm -hmm. Uzbeks, they are Tajiks, they are mm -hmm. Hazara Shias in mm -hmm. their ranks. Mm -hmm. So now they have accommodated these people in their ranks and file. Mm -hmm. Let, we are hopeful mm -hmm. that they will accommodate them in the government mm -hmm. and they are in contact with all their leadership. Mm -hmm. So I am very hopeful. Mm. Uh, that it will be an inclusive government. But you do realize that there are, I mean, like the US also there said, there's a hybrid war, there are concerns there at this are, time, there as far as for Pakistan also. Definitely, there is for concern. In Pakistan, mm. we are conjoined twins. Mm. Whatever happens in Afghanistan affects us. Mm. So we are more concerned, mm. and that's why we are trying uh, everything possible to support a peaceful transition of power. Right. Um, on that note, uh, uh, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us, um, Air Commodore Basit Raza Basi. Thank you for being with us. Saeed Mohammed Ali, thank you for joining us. Dr. Jamal Khan, thank you uh, for being with us today. Dr. Irfan Mesood, thank you uh, for your input as far as Afghanistan is concerned. Of course, at this time, Pakistan's primary goal is to make sure and ensure and do whatever we can to see that the transition is peaceful, that, that Afghanistan is peaceful as far as the region, and the region continues to be peaceful. Um, you know, like the COS said, there is a hybrid war, and whether the concerns there are something that we are watching closely to ensure that uh, that kind of fallout, any negative fallout, doesn't spill over as far as uh, to Pakistan. Let's hope that that can happen. Let's hope that the Afghani people, the women, children stay safe, uh, there are uh, their rights are protected, and it's it's a, it's a safe uh, commune. It's a safe country for them. Um, all thank you so much for being with us. Um, thank you for joining us today.